Hello, everyone. Uh, in this presentation, I'll share uh, some understand uh, some lessons from an assisted natural regeneration based project in India in terms of understanding indicators and facilitators of natural recovery and also indicators of the need for uh, introduction. About the organization that I represent, uh, it's called Junglescapes. We are a grassroots restoration nonprofit engaged in restoring degraded forest habitats over the past 15 years. And we work uh, in a place called Bandipur National Park in India, which is a key tiger and elephant habitat. And it is dominated by tropical dry forests and also part of the Western Ghats, which is a global biodiversity hotspot. The degradation scenarios of two types. Firstly, we have large areas occupied by invasive alien plant species, mainly Lantana camara. So you can see the two pictures on top of areas occupied by this particular plant species. And we also have uh, high anthropogenic pressures in the peripheral or buffer areas of the national park, uh, mainly through uh, cattle grazing, uh, uh, firewood collection, etc. So you can see the pictures at the bottom of hills which are uh, badly denuded uh, due to human pressures. Restoration goals are uh, of two types. One is to uh, revive the biodiversity, uh, being a national park, and secondly, to create uh, healthier habitats for wildlife. When we started in 2008, we also followed the typical uh, methodology of introducing saplings uh, with fast growing leguminous native tree species. But after about 18 to 24 months, we found that survival rates were extremely low, as well as the establishment and growth rates of those. Uh, sapling that survived. Uh, this is due to two factors. One is a very low rainfall levels in the particular area and also degraded soil and hydrological conditions resulting in low soil moisture and nutrients. And th therefore, we sh decided to shift to uh, assisted natural regeneration. The other reason was that the site that we are working on was a very large site, about 2,000 hectares in size, and therefore, we were looking for a low-cost methodology and ANR served this purpose very well because it helps scaling up restoration significantly. Uh, while introduction-based models uh, are five times more expensive as compared to ANR, and therefore even if ANR is uh, assumed to take twice as long as introduction, uh, we can still restore uh, almost two and a half times more area under ANR with the same time and resources. Our ANR approach, uh, was basically to identify and remove barriers to natural regeneration and they, thereby create the right environment for revival of natural processes. Uh, so the removal of barriers involved uh, removal of competition, reinstating soil health, reinstating hydrological regimes, reinstating other ecological processes and thereby facilitating natural recruitment. So in line with this, uh, our project uh, uh, activities involved removal of invasive alien species, uh, reversing soil erosion, improving hydrology, uh, accelerating natural uh, revegetation, and lastly, identify gaps, species gaps, and fill them through introduction. And side by side, we were also targeting a return of fauna uh, because they act as very important seed dispersal agents. The types of indicators we looked at were uh, indicators of barriers, indicators of regeneration potential, indicators of regeneration, actual regeneration, and indicators of the need for reintroduction. Uh, indicators of barriers, as I said earlier, poor soil conditions, hydrology, invasive species, uh, human pressures, and disrupted habitat flows. An important uh, element of uh, understanding the indicators uh, of, of barriers is the root cause analysis. And ANR required us to do an in-depth and rigorous uh, root cause analysis uh, rather than uh, take actions based on the symptoms alone. And this helped us to design the right interventions to address these root causes. A few examples, we found a high level of sheet erosion on the hill slopes, uh, and this was resulting in a topsoil loss and a prevention of regeneration of vegetation. Uh, and therefore, we uh, made the contour trenches that you see on the left. These are uh, shallow but long trenches, and this helped significantly in reviving uh, grass cover. We also found uh, gully erosion in many places, 
this was resulting in uh, stream siltation uh, and also uh, uh, loss of topsoil. And you can see the gully plugs that we uh, made on the left hand side. And on the right, you see after about two years, a significant uh, reversal of gully erosion and revival of uh, vegetation. Another thing that we observed was low stream flows and also low soil moisture levels uh, in large parts of the site. And therefore, we followed a watershed approach, mapping the uh, uh, primary and secondary order streams and uh, devising methods to increase the uh, stream flow. So you can see uh, the picture on the left, a small uh, rock detention structure, which is called a check dam, which is more for uh, harvesting uh, water. And these are very important uh, check dams for attracting uh, fauna and attracting herbivores, which carry a long number of seeds. On the right hand side, again, you can see a rock detention structure, which is called a stone overflow, which does not hold water, but it helps to slow down the uh, flow of water, and thereby it increases the uh, water table in the surrounding areas. Uh, all of these are made with locally available stones uh, and, and, and uh, earth. The soil was badly uh, degraded, as I said earlier, with very low microbial activity. And therefore, uh, the water harvesting uh, methods that we followed, like the contour trenches, uh, helped in improving soil microbial activity. Uh, what you see in the middle is a short trench, which is a four foot, four foot long uh, strength, uh, trench, which is about nine inches deep. Uh, and this was a major innovation because it was low cost and we could make a large number of them. And importantly, these trenches get filled up uh, in about 12 to 15 months with soil. So there's no permanent uh, damage to the ecosystem. Uh, revival of grasses was another important activity because grasses uh, help in retaining dew. I said this is a very uh, dry area and a uh, large part of the moisture in the soil comes from the morning dew uh, during large parts of the year. And therefore dew retention is very important uh, for uh, helping growth of other species. And grasses also act as good nurturing species, uh, which uh, help uh, uh, seedlings of other species to establish by reducing the pressure from herbivory. Uh, indicator of regeneration potential of three types, above ground, remnant vegetation, subsoil, propical banks, and seed migration potential. Uh, we assess the above ground remnant vegetation using baseline surveys, uh, which indicated both uh, plants with uh, sexual reproduction and vegetative reproduction. So we uh, made an inventory of seed bearing uh, trees and shrubs. We also made an inventory of grassy patches and importantly made an inventory of juvenile plants uh, which could help uh, faster recovery of the vegetation. Uh, we followed a method called natural juvenile support for juvenile uh, tree species in particular uh, where these plants were supported by short trenches to augment moisture availability and this helped these to uh, grow faster, and this helped in creating a canopy and prevent further uh, soil moisture loss. What we learned is that ANR ex helps uh, exploit the respiration potential of soil banks of seeds and other plant propagules in a very significant way. Uh, this is also there is also scientific evidence which shows that subsoil seeds in uh, dry and arid areas, although they remain dormant, they remain viable for long periods of time and this was proven by the fact that there was a very high recruitment in our plots uh, immediately after the removal of the barriers, despite long years of degradation. What is interesting is that the potential of soil seed propagules becomes evident in a very short period of time. So in about 18 to 24 months, we are able to assess uh, what comes from the in situ uh, soil banks. You can see the high level of recruitment post the burial removal. So we had almost uh, 450 uh, individuals of tree species coming up per acre, uh, almost 550 individuals of shrub species coming up per acre, and almost 70 to 80% of the area was uh, occupied by grasses. Uh, so this is what we call as a recruitment euphoria, which takes place whenever the barriers are removed and uh, the environment improves uh, post the barrier removal. And this is also proven by uh, scientific research, which shows that there is significantly higher regeneration in restored sites versus undisturbed sites. Seed migration potential is a bit more difficult to assess in the initial years, 
Uh, but what we found that the was that the migration potential was significantly higher than what we had estimated in the beginning. Uh, in each of our plots, species recruited far exceeded the remnant adult species. And we also observed in some cases uh, the appearance of species where there is no adult individual within a 10 square kilometer radius. Uh, and then we found that these were being uh, dispersed by long range dispersal agents like elephants or birds with long flying ranges. Uh, and then what, what this shows us is that uh, assessment of seed migration potential requires observations over a longer period of time uh, compared to assessing the subsoil potential. We normally uh, monitor a site for five years to see what comes back naturally and identify the important uh, species uh, gaps. And these could be keystone uh, plant species, threatened or endemic plant species, etc. And based on this, we plan uh, introduction of these. Uh, introduction could be either through uh, sapling planting, but we're increasingly moving towards uh, seed dribbling because it, uh, it's closer to natural processes. And we also adopt transplanting in the case of grasses where we transplant grass clips where required. Looking at the outcomes, uh, these are the indicators of uh, regeneration. Uh, we did a detailed uh, survey of some of the sites which have been under restoration for more than six years, totaling about 600 hectares. And we found about 270 species across 36 orders and 83 families. So you can see there's a very a good uh, level of diversity coming back at around 70% of reference models. What is important is that there is good structural uh, diversity in addition to uh, species diversity, which is very representative of the ecosystem that I'm talking about. Also high uh, increase as compared to the baseline, you can see across all plant habits, uh, there's almost a two and a half time uh, increase uh, in, in the number of species coming back. In terms of relative abundance, again, we are we were close to uh, the, the reference models. 45% of the species were found commonly, 45% uh, were occasional, and 10% was rare. And our plan is to now focus on those species where the frequency of occurrence is lower and to analyze them further. Rewilding is an important proxy indicator of the restoration progression in the case of our sites. And we found that many of the key mammal species have come back now compared to baseline, including some of the keystone species like elephants, tigers, uh, and the Indian bison, which is called the gaur. Uh, bird species, a very big increase, but we're still at 50% of reference. And insect surveys indicate that we are around 35% uh, of reference. These are pictures of some of the uh, restored woody forest areas. And these are pictures of some of the uh, restored grassland area uh, sites. Some other key learnings. Uh, an important learning is that uh, ANR helps natural organization with minimum risk of ecosystem alteration. In particular, uh, we do not uh, manipulate or alter uh, the ecological niches and therefore the, uh, the mosaic of the uh, ecosystem is intact. Uh, and it also avoids suppression of uh, soil propagules, which is very important because overplanting with saplings uh, could potentially suppress the soil propagules. Compared to conventional thinking, our experience shows that ANR is effective in highly degraded areas, like the areas I showed you, which had very high invasion by Lantana Camara. And uh, we get the same feedback from projects in Australia as well as in West Asia, where highly degraded sites have been. Uh, restored using ANR. Um, therefore, ANR can be a good option for highly degraded sites uh, in, in combination with uh, introduction, uh, but it can precede other uh, uh, approaches. In summary, uh, natural regeneration approaches require far greater attention uh, if we want to scale up restoration and meet the goals of the UN decade. Uh, this will help optimize time and resources uh, by limiting the need for active intervention to managing key exceptions. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors and uh, knowledge partners uh, in this journey of ANR, in particularly our sponsors who have kept faith in us uh, in, in adopting this ANR approach rather than insisting that we follow an approach of introduction. Thank you very much.